want to see no song. Hello and welcome to Stage Screen and In Between. I'm Helen and tonight we're coming to you from fabulous Las Vegas at the Action on Films International Film Festival and the Hollywood Dreams Film Fest. Tonight is the screening of High Hopes to a New Beginning that has been nominated for five awards. We have the director, the assistant director, and one of the lead actresses here flew in from New York for this wonderful event. Stick with us. I'm here with Dennis Cabrini, who is my director, because I happen to play his boss in High Hopes 2. How do you feel tonight, Dennis? Because Dennis wrote High Hopes 2, he stars in it, he's the producer, and he was nominated for Best Actor. Dennis, congratulations to Thank you. you. Thank you. It's very exciting to be here. Uh, being nominated for five awards is phenomenal, you know, it's like over the top and uh, I hope we win a couple of them, you know, but um, it's a really exciting thing and it's a big place. Uh, we got a lot of competition, Some we're going up against some bigger name actors, so uh, should be, you know, pretty, uh, it's, I, I'm really excited, I, I don't know what to so say. So let's tell everybody what some of the nominations are. We have okay. Best Cast, right? Yes, Outstanding performance by a cast. Mm -hmm. um, we have a uh, nomination for editing. Right, which, which is, is Andrew, Andrew Schwartz. Schwartz. Best actor is you. Best actor is myself. Best supporting actor is Bob DeBato. Right. And uh, best supporting actress, Michelle Eve Nadler. So um, we got, you know, it's five awards. And uh, it's very exciting. I didn't expect something like that. It's great to be here in Vegas. Okay, so now I have with me Andrew Schwartz, who is the best editor that I ever saw. Oh, thanks, Helen. <laughs> thanks. You're also the assistant director, right? And aren't you one of the producers also, as well as the editor of High Hopes to a New Beginning? I wasn't a producer, but I was co-director. Yeah. yeah. So, let me ask you, how long did it take you to edit this film? And, and on the rate of difficulty for all the editing that you've done in movies, how would you rate it? One to five, five being the hardest. Um, that's a good question. Uh, it actually took about a year to edit in full, which was a lot of painstaking work. But you know what? Um, I really enjoy it. And compared to other films, to me, editing films is always a challenge. No matter what kind of film it is, whether it's an action sequence or a romance, whatever it is. Um, so I don't really think of the films as being harder than each other. Um, they all have their challenges and they all have their ups and their downs, but it's, it's a whole lot of fun once it's done. And, um, and it's really the editor that makes, other than the writer, who is the creator, don't you think the editor really molds the movie? Yeah, it's almost like writing the movie a second time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you make the decisions. Now, did Dennis sit in on some of that editing? Absolutely. We um, also had um, Dennis Cabrini sitting in on a very intense, laborious color process um, supervised session at the very end, um, and that was very intense. So we worked extremely hard, and um, props to Dennis for his endurance um, in that stage. And uh, editing yeah. is really an art. Really an art. Can you uh, can you tell everybody what was it that you edited on? I edited on Final Cut Pro Seven, which is. Um, almost an ancient program at this point, but uh, I love it very much, and this was the last project I used for that program, so it's very oh, dear to me, yeah. and I love that program. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I always think it's best to use what you're familiar with, you know? If it ain't broken, don't fix it. That's my motto, exactly. right? <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, I hope you win the Best Editing Award, because, Andrew, you deserve it. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate that. I'm here with Catherine Briding, who's a lead actress in High Hopes to a New Beginning, and she plays Joni Valentino, Dennis's wife. Isn't this fabulous that we're here in Las Vegas? It is, and it's great to be back on your show. I really oh, love your show. I watched you. your YouTube, and oh. I, <laughs> I love it, yeah. I watch my network shows, too, yeah. but we're at the Hollywood Dreams Film Festival, and it's part of the Action on Films International Film Festival, and I am so excited to be here, right? What an honor it is that High Hopes 2 made it. So why did you feel, Catherine, compelled to fly all the way to Las Vegas from New York to be at the screening? 
Well, I really believe in the project, and we're getting so much good feedback, which makes it even more exciting. And I'm having a great time. It's a really gorgeous venue, and I was at the pool all day. And <laughs> What do you think your chances are that we're going to win the Best Cast Award? Well, that would really be fabulous. It would really be an honor. And um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I mean, I think everyone was excellent. And Dennis up for Best I, Actor. I really hope Dennis gets it for Best Actor because yeah. he really did a great job. Oh, wow. Isn't that Ron Jeremy? You know, that ugly porn star? No. That's Danny DeVito. My name is Danny Valentino. And ever since I can remember, I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> All my friends, they thought I was crazy. I don't look like an actor. You're just wasting your time going on to this audition. Look at that hack license. Look at that picture. Man, you're some ugly dude, I'll tell you. And after 25 years of trying to make it in show business, I have to question whether I even have the talent. Now I see why your acting career never took off. What a horrible performance. The last time I ever saw anybody perform that badly was, uh, let me see, you on your honeymoon. Pursuing this career has caused me nothing but trouble. I think your acting has gone to your brain. But my landlord. Why would I want to make a bet with you? I'll tell you why, because I just came from the police station and turned myself in. Oh, right, you got a deal, moron. With my wife, because I'm never home, And when I am, I'm drooling over my neighbors, the Titanellis. It seems like trouble just has a way of finding me. To make ends meet, I drive a taxi cab. Recently, my boss knocked me out. <laughs> and then she fired me. So in order to get my job back, I offer her a proposition. I challenge you to a three-round boxing match. I accept your challenge, Big Mac. So now, I gotta fight a woman to get my job back. I must be crazy. And that's not the only fight I have on my hands. The police are after me. The only constants in my life are that everybody, everybody, thinks I'm a loser. You're a loser. L-O-S-E-R. Maybe I should just give up. What's wrong with me? Why does a guy with no looks, no talent, and no luck think he can make it as an actor? All I know is I'm not going to give up. I may be a loser, but I've never been a quitter. I'm not going to let go of my dream. I'm not going to let go of my high hopes. I'm here with Chucky Curry, who's a martial arts champion, and he had a wonderful movie screening today. You want to tell our audience what the name of the movie was? Yes, the movie is called Enter the Tiger, something you got to see. ChuckyCurry.com. Get on down with it. Break down with the girl. Yeah. Now, I have a feeling that it has something to do with martial arts, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. Without giving away the whole thing, you want to tell everybody what it was about? Bruce Lee's soul brother comes back from the grave to kick all y'all stuff around. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excellent movie though. You really got to see it. Now, is this the first movie that you've ever done? No, no, no. This is well, this is the first short film that I've done in the last maybe 5 years. Really? Yes, but uh, I I started making films when I was like 16. Okay, so now do you write them as well or do you act in them or yes, do you do the I whole write, thing? I act, I direct, I choreograph the fight scenes. Uh, I did work in some major movies. I worked with Jackie Chan in Rush Hour 2. Oh uh -huh. I worked in The Hulk, I worked in Twisted, I worked in Ocean's Eleven, met Brad Pitt. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm looking forward to doing more. Good for you. What's your website? ChuckyCurry.com. And is that uh, C-H-U-C-K-Y? 
Y C U R R I E. Yeah, see that? <laughs> That's what you call destiny. Everybody, look them up, and you can see not only the trailer. Don't you have the whole movie online uh, too? We're working with a couple of people. We're talking about making a full feature, but you can see it on our Vimo. Uh, Enter the Tiger director uh, Giovanni Tagliga. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, I saw that. Well, this is very interesting. The show you're at tonight is our smaller version of AOF. It's called Hollywood Dreams. Because of Dr. Robert Goldman, you'll be celebrating a couple of great events this season. One's called the Legendary Stunt Awards. Of course, the other is Action on Films Icon Awards, which were created by Michael D. Pasquale and Dr. Goldman. This is a really beautiful thing to see because it's taken 13 years to create this group of people. Before I begin, before I begin, I'd like Mr. Lad Juan to come up and say a few words because he has proven himself to be an AOFer and a Hollywood dreamer all the way through. Would you please come up there? First and foremost, uh, I think, um, you know, give it up to Del and his team. Yeah, I can't imagine uh, the preparation that's been involved in setting all this up, uh, including the new sessions. Uh, I think they did it. Zerudo, so we're one of the sponsors here. But tonight is not about Zerudo. It's about everyone here as friends and as family. And um, thank you so much for being here and making this all possible. I'd like to invite Dr. Goldman. Thank you. This is a very, very special weekend for everyone. Uh, and there's one aspect that I just wanted to bring up. We have so many great martial artists, so many grandmasters. Well, our whole martial arts family is here, which really makes this even more an auspicious occasion because not only do you have movies, but you also have people who teach tradition and teach respect. This weekend we have, you know, we have a very exciting fight, the McGregor Mayweather fight. However, the way those two interact is not teaching the tradition. What you have is two people are not showing the appropriate respect for each other, and they are actually doing the opposite of what martial arts all about, which is being humble, being being someone who is respectful of their parents, their children, their peers, their opponents, which is a very very different situation. And so we published an article just this week, which is now spreading around virally and is in a number of newspapers, magazines, about how martial arts can save America and how we can bring back the respect. He's a world-class martial artist. He rose to the ranks where he's done over 140 features, 300 credits as TV as a stuntman, stunt coordinator, and other positions. He recently coordinated John Wick 2, as well as Fast and Furious 8, and is currently doing Skyscraper with, Drain, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the lead. The man, J.J. Pierre. I just want to say it's a great time to be in the uh, action movie business. 
At this moment in time, <clears throat> there's more action movies being made than any time in the history of cinema. Bigger movies, faster movies, bigger budgets, more action, more expectation, more danger, and more responsibility. It's a huge honor to be a part of that. As a stuntman, we're usually the guys behind the guys, so very rarely do we get to step out from behind that curtain and get recognized, so getting a night like this is, is huge for us. Please give him a big, warm round of applause for teaching. Well, I guess you all know that wrestlers are stuntmen, too. Um, geez, what can I say? Uh, thank you so much to the AOL Film Festival. I am so honored and proud to be amongst you all. Uh, this is real special to me. I mean, to win my first uh, award in shooting a movie with a director that believed in wrestlers, believed in our craft, that we were able to adapt into the film and the movie industry to bring these characters alive. And that's what we do. And somebody, by a good friend, an Italian director by the name of Stefano Mila took a chance on a crew from Los Angeles, Knox Pro Academy, where we trained wrestlers, uh, young kids, to be able to uh, send them off to WWE and fulfill their dream. This cat has been a longtime friend of ours. Came into our domain, seen what we had, and took a chance on filming this movie called Kingdom of Gladiator. Every single person you see in that film were first time, never have done a stunt before. All, all they did was adapt it and utilize what they were trained as far as professional wrestling. And so this, I'm honored to accept this award on behalf of Knox Pro Academy wrestlers that are in Los Angeles, all these kids that were given a chance, that never got a chance to grace the screens, the big screens. And last night, we premiered our movie here in Las Vegas, uh, in the Palms. The outstanding cast performance. Performance feature, Close Calls, Richard Stringham, Selena P, Kenneth Cagle, High Hopes 2, Dennis Cabrini, You Have a Nice Flight, Jimmy Den. Then there was you, Adele Bajire, The Operative, John Alfieri, The Neighborhood, Frank D'Angelo. Oh, look at me go. <laughs> the runner-up is The Operative, John Alfieri, and the winner is High Hopes 2. <laughs> This is a shot. I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, my cinematographer, um, Andrew Schwartz, Catherine Byrd Riding, and uh, Helen Primos, who came here with me and uh, to to see how we did in the uh, festival. Um, I want to thank, first and foremost, God. I want to thank Dell for, uh, for for choosing us and. Um, I've, there's one other person I want to dedicate this award to, and it's my son Peter, who's 35 years old, who's been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer, and uh, this is for my son Peter, and my parents. I, I want to thank the festival for this wonderful award and the recognition. This is a beautiful festival. The quality of the films that I have seen is really outstanding. And I'm honored to be here with all of you. And I'm so, so proud to have won. After seeing the incredible films that I saw at this festival, I have to say that this is a real honor. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Helen Primus, and we're here at the Action on Films International Film Festival, Hollywood Dreams Film Fest in beautiful, exciting Las Vegas. This hotel, the Palms Casino and Resort, is absolutely fabulous. They have their own multiplex theaters, and we're able to view these wonderful indie films. Stay with us. I am with the winner of the best youth performer here at this fabulous film festival, and her name is Lauren Lasang. Did I pronounce that correctly? You yes. did. Now tell everybody, what's the name of the movie that you were in? It Knows. It Knows. And what was your role? I played young Claire. You played young Claire. Now, I believe this was somewhat of a little bit of a scary movie, right? Yes. And uh, had you ever done anything like this before? No, this is my first feature. Yeah? And was it exciting for you? Did you love doing it? Very. Yeah. How long did it take for you to shoot it? Eight week, Eight weekends. Eight weekends. So you were able to continue with your school work as well as do the movie. I just love that. Now, did all the girls at school know you were doing the movie? A lot of my friends did. Were they excited for you? Yes. Can you tell us briefly about the story? Well, it's a psychological thriller about a girl named Claire who gets abused in her past and it comes to taunt her in her future and she has to battle these demons. Now, what state are you from? Arkansas. You're from Arkansas and it was shot in Arkansas? It was shot in Clarendon, Arkansas, Somerville, Tennessee and Holly Springs, Mississippi. Yeah. Now, how exciting was it for you to come all the way to Las Vegas to this wonderful Action on Films International Film Festival? I was so excited. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. And you look so, so beautiful. Thank you. Where can we go to find out more about you or see the trailer to your movie? We have an It Knows Facebook page, and you can follow that and find more information on there. Okay. Now, do you want to tell us what the name of the director was? Um, Mark Manis is the director. Good for you. Well, I wish you all the best. And let's show everybody this fabulous award that you won. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's fabulous. And it says, Hollywood Dreams International Film Festival winner. Best young performer, short or feature. Isn't that wonderful? Lauren Lasang. It knows. And now we know. Lauren is on the rise. Keep your eyes peeled for her. Congratulations, Lauren. We're at the Action on Films International Film Festival's wonderful festival here at the Palms Casino and Resort. And I have with me a runner-up. He has a fabulous documentary, and he's going to tell us all about it now. Dan, Tell us about your movie and introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, I'm Dan Dapkus. Uh, I'm a, a researcher and uh, videographer for the film. So Safwaba Banahampton is the director producer. She was nominated for best director. She won the, the runner-up award for the film Growing Up Mong at the Crossroads. Okay, now what was the importance of this film? Why did you find that it was important to uh, follow this story? So it's, uh, I think it's a very timely story about uh, bringing up questions about uh, political refugees, migration, and immigrants, and obviously that's a hot topic today. So it really just addresses these issues and talks about specific people who've been through situations like political refugees, um, and, and it just tells their stories. Yeah, and now you were a nominee for uh, Best Documentary, weren't you? It was the Best Director for, the doc for, docu oh. for Full Feature Documentary. Oh, and what was her name again? It was a female, right? Safwa Babana Hampton. She's from Morocco. Okay. So she works, she's a professor at Michigan State University, and so that's right. So the story revolves around children, actually, going back and finding their roots, yes. and what had happened when their ancestors ex ex escaped Laos, right? Yes. And uh, the difference in the way they were brought up and what they go back to find in the lifestyle of the people that were left behind. And what was the reaction, basically, of the children? And what was the age range of the children? So they were in their late teens to early 20s. So, uh, and one woman actually is in her 40s. So the, a spectrum of, of children whose parents fled Laos during the, the secret CIA war in Laos, being chased by the communists. So across the Mekong River to go to Thailand, refugee camps, and then eventually France and the United States accepted these families uh, as, as immigrants here to this, to this country and to France.
So, yeah, very interesting responses. The, the Laos in particular, the contrast couldn't be more stark from what we see here in Las Vegas, for example, yeah. <laughs> compared to the, the small villages in the mountains yeah. of Laos. Okay. So do you have a website where we can see the trailer and find out more information on maybe a prior work that you've done and what's yes. coming up? Yeah, so growingupmong.com is the name of the website. How do you spell Hmong? H-M-O-N-G. Okay, so you have some people that you would like to thank for helping this production come together, correct? Yes, absolutely, thank you. This film is a 2017 production of Michigan State University in partnership with the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign Humanities Without Walls Consortium, funded by a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation. Our institutional project partners include the Indiana University, the University of Michigan, Musée de l'Histoire d'Immigration, in France and the Collège d'Etudes Mondiales in France and I'd like to support them all for their instrumental support and constant encouragement throughout this project and of course the Hmong community themselves because obviously they're in the film and they welcome us into their homes and uh, obviously instrumental partners. Merci beaucoup. Ah, de rien. Merci. <laughs> Très bien.